Hello, my name is Greg Davis. I am an associate professor of otolaryngology at the University of Washington, and I am director of rhinology and endoscopic skull base surgery. And that means I work in the nose in patients. I do medicine work and surgery work in the nose and sinuses. And today I'm here with my friend, Dr. Andrew Goldberg from University of California, San Francisco. And Dr. Goldberg is here at a sinus course, the Seattle Otology and Advanced Rhinology course. And as one of my guest speakers, thank you, Andrew, for coming. Uh, and I'd just like to start by chatting with you a little bit about what is an otolaryngologist and how long did it take to get to where you are today? You know, an otolaryngologist is really a, a practitioner of medical and surgical treatment for the, uh, the ears, nose, and throat and related structures. And so uh, we have a, a unique specialty in that we're a regional specialty. And we take care of virtually all of the problems that occur in our areas, of course, with help from our colleagues who have expertise, say, in the eye or the brain or other areas that we find. It's a very rewarding specialty. We deal with common problems in patients. They come to us with usually quality of life problems, sometimes with life-threatening problems. But for most of rhinology, most of sinus surgery, we're really dealing with quality of life and making our patients feel better. So how did you become a rhinologist? You are well known for your medical and surgical treatment of patients with complex nose and sinus disorders. What is a rhinologist and what does it take to get to that level? You know, I'll, I'll be honest, uh, I never uh, thought that I would become a rhinologist uh, and principally a sinus surgeon. When I left residency, I had some skills. Most of my skills were actually in head and neck cancer surgery and uh, it's something that we do a lot in residency. There was very little rhinology going on when I was uh, when I graduated from residency. The endoscopic sinus world had really only begun to be formed uh, in this country for sure. And it was really almost by accident where I landed a job at an institution that did a lot of rhinology and sinus surgery, had excellent people doing that doing it. And I picked up skills from them. and then uh, after a few years of uh, of being exposed to it, really, uh, concentrate on it much more, uh, much more fervently, and really uh, develop those skills and hone those skills with those partners close by. So, as you gain skill, take us through what it's like to be a surgeon from a resident to day one of being an attending surgeon yeah. and now being recognized as an expert rhinologist. I'll tell you that I, uh, to this day, I remember the first patient when I got out of residency that I booked for tonsillectomy where I actually had responsibility for that patient, where I was speaking to that family. There was no one else supervising. There was no one else whose name was on that case. And I really remember it, and I, I sort of felt the weight of that responsibility um, early in my career. Certainly, we feel that weight every time we recommend to somebody that they go to the operating room and have their body permanently altered um, by us in order to try to help them with some problem. Uh, I also feel that 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 doctors in general go through stages in their career. And at first, you know, we're, uh, we're trying to manage the technical skills, kind of understand exactly how to do what it is we're supposed to do. And then we sort of have that second stage where we begin to understand who to apply that to, what patients will best benefit from what treatment. And then lastly, you get to this stage where you can really enjoy taking care of patients, where you're confident in your skills, always learning, but still confident in your skills, you understand better how to apply that to patients, and you can actually uh, enjoy more the, the, the facets of the patient's lives, the other things that, that it helps them with, and really enjoy taking care of patients a little more fully. Of course, they all overlap. I'm always learning new skills. I'm always learning a better way to apply my skills, and I've always enjoyed taking care of patients. But, uh, you know, I, I feel sort of the, the bulk of that as I move through my career has, has shifted a little bit, and, um, and I feel like I have a much more kind of facile and comfortable relationship with patients at, at this stage of my career. You've taken time out of your busy schedule to come and be one of my guest speakers here at our sinus surgery course. Thank you for doing that. What You and I are unique in that we're both academic surgeons. We teach. So what is it about being an academic surgeon, about teaching? What inspires you to come to courses like this 
sure. uh, to share what you have. Well, there are two parts to my teaching. You know, one part is, is the teaching that's here, this continuing medical education, teaching to physicians who are largely in practice and taking care of patients. And of course, the impetus behind that is having uh, the opportunity to help them just do a better job and to really uh, to hone their skills. They're on the front lines. I mean, I have the luxury of doing the vast majority of my work in the sinuses. And so my skills get honed very quickly because it's what I do virtually all the time. But these people in practice, they have to understand ear disease. They have to understand um, all different aspects of otolaryngology. And this is only one part of what, the, what most of these people do. And so it's harder to hone your skills and it's harder to keep up on everything all the time. They in some ways have the most difficult job staying at the cutting edge of every part of our field uh, all the time. And so any part I can, uh, I can uh, play in improving the way they take care of patients and improving the skill with which they can do their job, I'm very happy to do it. Excellent. Last question I have for you. Thanks for taking time to chat with us. If you weren't here in beautiful Seattle in the middle of March <laughs> with 60 degree rain, what would you be doing at home? What's one of your favorite things to do in your free time? Well, honestly, I'd be home with my wife and kids. <laughs> and I'd be going to <laughs> soccer and baseball <laughs> with my two boys and my wife. And that, that is truthfully what I'd be doing. But I, I will tell you that the hobby that um, I've developed uh, and that I hopefully my kids will also uh, grow to love is sailing. And, you know, I live in San Francisco and uh, we have a beautiful bay right nearby. We can sail in the bay virtually year-round uh, and have different conditions depending on where you go. And it's been a wonderful challenge and, uh, and an opportunity to, to sort of hone those skills. So hopefully as my kids grow, they'll learn to love it and we'll all do it together. Well, it's nice to know you can have a great life and be an academic surgeon as well. So Definitely. thanks for your time today. I appreciate it. <laughs>